Hello bass plates and today we're going to tell you how to use hinge constraints. So if you don't know what hinge constraint is, hinge constraint is currently a useful tool, you know, making things turn around, like making parts rotate and stuff, without actually need to use the rotate function. Anyhow, I will show you how to use this and yeah, let's get in. So how you can find it is you got to go to the model and you just go to create and you just press hit. So the first thing you want to apply this is you need two parts, one, two. Then what are we gonna do is we're going to, you know, put it up like that, you know, make things turn up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a hinge constraint, which is you have to click hinge. And you can see, you see this, you know, upturn, you know, this is where you're gonna have to click. And you, if you want to find, you're going to have to find the center. This one's the attachment one. And if I wish it go up, that's attachment two. Now you have to create the hinge. Now you can see it has a hinge pointer and it has two attachments, which you actually need to do. They are super important. And for these hinge constraints, uh, I'm going to tell you what some info I'm going to use. So I'm going to anchor this one because, you know, like that. Now I'm going to show you how to use hinge constraints. So hinge constraints is currently a good one. Uh, the yellow one, which is just useless. Or oh, you can just use visible. And you're going to go to the hinge. So this one is the hinge, the angular type. It's This is going to be the important part. So if you run this out, as you can see, it does move up like that because we forgot to move it. And yeah, that's how you make motors or hinge constraints. If you want to, you can just go it up. The none is just nothing. You can do whatever you want. Here, I'm gonna show you. You can do anything you want with none. As you can see, I'm in right here. So if I go in right here, as you can see, it turns like an actual hinge constraint, but it moves freely. So it's just like this. Yep, hang on, move this. Yeah. So yeah, it's actually kind of useful if you're making, you know, free doors you know you just push off that's how you make a door i don't know how i should make that but uh I, yeah but as you can see we got this revolving door it's not really that good but if you just push it out as you can see it makes a good revolving door uh yeah it it kind of just stop i don't know why but anyhow it does work evenly but yeah you could just you could just just move around yeah, move around like that. That's how you make a good revolving door. So to actually make one, you're going to need two parts. One of them is the base, one of them is the rotating door. The base, you've got to anchor it, but you've got to have to coll can collide off. And then the door is super important. You're going to need to unanchor this, and then you can just make it higher. And make the hinge constraint none. And that's it. You made your own revolving door. You can be a little bit more creative if you want to. So the motor is supposed to be used for turning. You know, you can just make auto cars and stuff, huh? So I'm gonna show you how to actually activate this. You could know, just set the velocity to 100, whatever. And you could just add torque. I'm just gonna add stuff. Acceleration infinity, yeah, I'll just use that, I guess. So if I run this, it should activate the motor. Oh my God, it's spinning fastly, as you can see. That's how you make a motor. We made a auto car, which means they can auto you to a parking or whatever, but it will send you to the idiotic pit.
servo is definitely, you know, a tight aim speed. So, let's see if you can try this. So, as you can see, it stands on that good positioning. And then we're going to go there. And uh, let me change some angular speed. Let's try 20. So, we're going to set the source max torque to 1000. And this is the target angle. So, you can just change whatever angle you want. Let's see, 90 degrees. As you can see, it turns 90 degrees. So, uh, the, the angle speed is currently like fine. If I change it to 75 degrees, as you can see, it steadies like 70 degrees. 120 degrees. As you can see. If you want to make it more steady, so you so if you try 50, and I can change that to uh, 40. Yeah, it does get up a little bit of uh, back off. You know what I like? Uh, let's try and make this a million. So I'm going to set this to 90. As you can see, it does very smoothly if you set the torque to higher. And then I'm going to set it to uh, 160. As you can see, it goes like that. So yeah, let's see, uh, 360. It goes right here, it goes to the center. When I click it, as you can see, I open my door. And then uh, when I click it back, it's right here. As you can see. It does push me out a little bit, so yeah. As you can see, that's how you make doors. If you want to know how how I made this, so I just used this one. So I'm going to use this one. So this is the base. This is the base. So I made this one as a hinge constraint because the base needs to be in the hinge constraint because it powers it. I switched it to servo and then added some angular speed and max torque. You could just mess around with the target angle. So you like that. Like that. Then I just group them together and make a clone one and the door. And also the door has a click detector. If you, you want to change the mac, uh, activation disk, you, you can do that. Then I just put it in the folder named doors, add a server script, and as you can see, you can make all the doors. That's it. And yeah, that is all for today for making hinge constraints. If you like it, please subscribe for more Roblox Studio content. And we're trying to get 300 subs at the end of the year. And yeah, enjoy. Bye bye bye. Every day I'm feeling higher than a ceiling. I picked up on love.